today I want to take some time and just talk about this lathe specifically, why I chose it, some of the features that I added to it. Um, so the first question that comes up a lot is why did I choose an old lathe compared to going with a new lathe? The simple answer is I wanted the beauty of kind of an older style lathe and I also wanted the benefits that an older lathe have. Um, now there are some cons which I'll get into and a lot of those cons that I have addressed uh, but the short answer is I wanted something old and nostalgic that was better built um, and I was going to address the shortcomings of this lathe specifically. Um, the second question I get a lot is why this lathe specifically, the Colchester? Um, and there are a lot of lathes out there that are great lathes. Um, the Monarch 10 E is a great lathe. I would have loved to have that. Um, you know, there's a bunch of good South Bend lathes, LeBlanc lathes. Um, I found a great deal on these Colchester lathes. Um, and really the way that they're designed, they're really overkill and overbuilt. Uh, and that's something I enjoy quite frequently is when things are designed uh, over what is needed. And that's the main reason I went with this. The other reason is the price. I was able to get this lathe for 1900, um, which in my area was a pretty good deal. Uh, and it appeared to be in pretty rough shape. Um, going into some of the details of what I've done to the lathe to bring it uh, back into this century and kind of restore it. So the first thing was when I got this, it had a three phase motor. Um, three phase I have no problem with, but it was a high and low speed motor. Um, and I wanted to convert that and also be able to use it in my shop. The motor it came with was 460 volts. And so even if I did a VFD, I wouldn't be able to use that. So I took the motor out and put a five horsepower Baldor motor in and a VFD. Um, that VFD allowed me the ability to change the speeds variably. Um, which is why I installed a variable speed control. Um, and the real reason I did that was I wanted to be able to dial in the speed uh, much more specifically. That way, if I'm doing any sort of power tapping, I can run the chuck real low. And with a five horsepower motor, I can really get the torque that I need. Um, the other thing that I did is I added a quick change tool post by Aloris. I really wanted to go with a quality unit that would last for many years to come. And then I went with a bunch of Aloris tool holders. Um, let's see. The other thing that I want to point out is I added this mist coolant. Uh, we'll see how that works in the future. Originally, I did not want to do any coolant because I didn't want to damage the machine by doing anything wet, but I realized doing some deep boring and drilling that coolant would be necessary. Um, the cool part about the coolant uh, is I do have it on a track in the back. So as I operate this side to side, the coolant hoses go ahead and roll up in a CNC track. Um, the DRO is something I added, I knew I wanted. I ended up going with a new all unit. Uh, AccuWrite makes a better DRO, uh, but it just was too pricey for what I wanted. Um, I really like this DRO. I like the look of it. I like the operation. Um, and so I just decided to go with that unit. The other thing that really I wanted in a lathe was the ability to have everything at the ready. Um, so when you're trying to work and you're trying to be lean, you wanna be able to grab the tools you need. You don't wanna be hunting around with them in drawers. So I decided to take this backsplash and add a shelf. Uh, that way I could add all my tool holders, uh, add the tools I need, micrometers, et cetera. That way when I'm working, all I gotta do is grab a tool, put it back. Um, so I was able to weld onto the shelf that was existing so that I could add the features that I want. Um, I also added a compressed air setup um, just so I could have air at the ready and be able to blow chips away, um, be able to take care of any of that. Um, I also was missing the steady rest on this unit when I got it. So I was able to go online and source one of those, um, which was really, really nice because those can be hard to locate. Uh, lastly, I was able to get uh, a couple of chucks for it. This is a four jaw chuck. Um, I believe it's Chinese. I bought it on uh, MSC uh, to Gibraltar. Um, and then I got a Jacobs chuck uh, that is a uh, flex, rubber flex collet for doing collet turning. And then I got a really nice uh, Bernard uh, three jaw chuck uh, as well. And these are all eight inch chucks. So we're good on chucks. I got the tooling that I needed. Um, so I pretty much have everything I need to go ahead and get to get going on the lathe. 
Um, aside from that, um, did a full restoration on it. Uh, there were a couple things that were off, uh, like one of the gears uh, on the transmission was sticking, so I fixed that. But in, in all in all, the condition of the lathe was pretty good. Uh, I didn't have to fix too many things. It just refreshed everything, gave it a clean paint job, and uh, tried to clean everything up. Uh, I'm really excited to get to use this lathe and to see how it works. Uh, I've already used it in preparation. I used it for a couple months just to see where the flaws in the machine were um, to try to figure out what I needed to fix. Uh, but really excited to get into doing some turning and to figuring out what the best parts of this lathe are. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.